Next, let's get into another type of genetic cross. This gets more exciting and challenging. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain sex linkage um, while using an example. So we'll start with the application. So this is a, a question here. Um, and then I'll give you a, a few notes. You can read ahead if you want or skip ahead, but just follow through. Trust me on this. If you watch the previous video, I explained a simple mono, mono simple monohybrid cross where we're talking about uh, eye color or something like that. Here we get into sex linkage and now it's important if we're talking about a man or a woman. So let's look at the question first. The question here says a father with normal vision has children with a mother who had a colorblind father. Okay, that's a lot of information there. Show the possible genetic outcome of the children. I highly recommend I highly recommend that after you watch this once, go back and check it out once again, and then you'll you'll be able to see more clearly how I'm figuring this out. So as always, I said, start off with the parent phenotypes. This and this are the two most difficult stages in solving these genetic problems, okay? So um, what you need to understand is that colorblindness and hemophilia, it's another one of these traits, as soon as you hear anything about colorblindness, you know it's a sex-linked trait and you have to put down X and Y chromosomes. You can't just put down uh, a big B and a little B or big C or little C, whatever letter you decide to use. And it turns out that color blindness is inherited on uh, from the sex chromosomes. So there are 23 pairs of chromosomes. 22 of them are called autosomes and the XX and the XY, whichever one you have at the end, if you're a boy or a girl, those are called the sex chromosomes. So when the traits are actually connected, when these genes are actually found on the X chromosome or the Y chromosome, it becomes very interesting and uh, you'll see nature is not very fair in terms of genetic diseases that are actually um, located on the sex chromosome. So we're going to learn a few things as we go through this. So bear with me now. Uh, I'm telling you that colorblindness is linked to the X chromosome. And here's another thing. When you're doing something like this, if you choose a letter like C, which actually looks the same when it's a capital and lowercase, when you write out your example, really exaggerate the size of the letters. It's better to avoid that. You might even want to use the word, the letter B. But try to use a letter that's kind of related. Like C is makes sense for me because I'm thinking colorblindness. So, Big C, I happen to know, and you will know after this as well too, that big C, uh, normal vision is actually dominant and color blindness is recessive. So, and it's found on the X chromosome. So anytime I have an X chromosome, I must show a big C or little c on it. Another thing that commonly comes up is people think that, uh, well, it's not that they think, but one of the wrong answers is always a Y chromosome with a C, a big C or little c attached to it. Since colorblindness is only attached to the X chromosome, the Y is always naked by itself. There is nothing there. So I've established that X big C means normal vision and X little c is the allele for colorblindness. So there are the uh, sex chromosomes. You can see the X chromosome and the Y chromosome are very different in size. So you could have some genes that are on the X chromosome that are not located on the Y chromosome. So that's where we're headed. So let's start with the most difficult parts, the parent phenotypes. The father is normal. That's clear here. So I'm going to write down a normal father. The mother, let's see, the mother had a colorblind father. The mother had a colorblind father. Actually, this doesn't say that the mother is actually normal. We should add that in there. Um, can I do that? Okay. So assume that any question that's given you is going to be, there will be no, it'll be bulletproof. There will be no problems in there. So I, th I just realized I needed to add that in there. So anyway, so the question is father with normal vision. There we go. Normal father has children with a normal mother. So the mother is normal, but she had a colorblind father. That might be some extra information I need to use. Because she had a colorblind father, I know that women, girls, are XX. They have to be XX. XY means boy, right? So women have to be XX. But since her father was colorblind, I know her father only had one X chromosome. So the father had to pass on his X chromosome. So the mother is actually going to be uh, a carrier. Maybe I'll add a little explanation on at the end of that in a second. So I've established that the mother is a carrier, which means she has to be normal. So let's 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 figure out the mother first. So the mother has to be X. She has to 
she's normal, right? She's normal. So no matter what, she has to have an X, big C. She's a girl, so she can't have a Y. That's not going to make sense. Otherwise, she'd be a boy. So she has to have another X. But is it another X, big C, or is it an X, little C that she gets? And turns out, because her father was colorblind, her father was colorblind, so that her father had to be this. Her father had to be X, little C, Y. So when she got her traits, uh, she's a girl, right? So the dad couldn't pass her a Y, otherwise she'd be a boy. So the dad, her colorblind father, had to pass her an X little C. Anyways, that's how I've established that. So that's an uh, interesting way that that question comes up. Okay, the father has to be X, Y um, because he's a boy. So I'm going to put that Y chromosome in there. And he has to have an X. He's normal. X big C means normal. So there we go. Okay, the rest of it you're going to find out is really easy. So the tricky part is figuring out right in the beginning who, what the phenotypes and the genotypes are. Now, if, you've understand, if you understand how to do any of this stuff, then the rest will be easy. So the possible gametes, through the law of segregation, he could pass on this to his kid, or he could pass on this to his kid. The mom could pass on this to her kid, or she could pass on this to her kid. And now we just go into the Punnett square, and I, I could just move these down here, but I, I have some ready prepared, so let's see. Uh, now I have female, male, so let's start with dad. Dad could pass on an X, big C, just separating out the gametes, or he could pass on a Y. Mama could pass on X, big C, or she could pass on an X, little C. So what do we get when we put this all together? It's just a matter of bringing these in, right? That's really fun. So X, big C, X, big C should be this situation here. Let's see if I can sneak that up. Boom. X, big C, Y. Now, when you're writing this, really make sure, this is the most difficult part, well, if your handwriting is really, really bad, or if you're bad at clicking and dragging, X, big C, and Y. What about over here? All right, let's be careful about this. And we always put the big letters first, just for organization purposes. It doesn't make a difference. X, big C, X, little c. If you write it like this, it means the exact same thing. It just looks like you don't, you don't really understand what you're doing. But anyways, X big C, X little C, and finally we have an X little C and a Y. Let's see what happened here. Check it out. 50% of the kids are boys, 50% are girls. It always works out like that when you have XX crossed with XY. That's why we have a pretty even distribution of boys and girls in the world. Like before, I like to write down what the phenotypes are. This is a girl, and this girl will have big C means normal. Normal girl. Normal vision girl. This will be a XX girl. Big C, even though there's a little C here, big C is dominant. So this will be a normal girl. Boom. XY boy. XY boy. This will be a boy. And because he only has one copy, big C will determine what his phenotype will be. So that is a normal boy. What is this? A girl? No, it's a boy. XY boy. But little C. Uh-oh, there's no big C around here to hide this, no, to bully this, so this little C will be expressed. Check this out. Colorblind boy. Wait a second. I had a normal father and a normal mother. I added that in. It's a normal mother, so both parents are not colorblind, but look at what happens. They could end up with a colorblind boy. 50% of their boys will be colorblind. Look at that. One out of two, if we just consider the boys. Um... 50% of the boys will be colorblind, but look at this. None of their girls will be colorblind. 100% of the girls will be normal. And if you wanted to look at all the kids together, 25% of children will be colorblind. This shows you how having a trait that is only connected to the X chromosome can actually end up affecting one gender more than the other. And in this case, boys get affected more than girls. If you look up worldwide statistics for colorblindness, yes, indeed. Boys are more likely affected by the trait. Hemophilia is another that you could do exactly the same way like this. So remember that. If the question says hemophilia or colorblindness, you have to write down the X and Y chromosomes. Uh, a few other notes. Let me see. Add here. Female carriers, they're considered heterozygous. They have to be because they have two copies. Men cannot be carriers for sex-linked traits because they only have one X chromosome there. Um, men are always XY, so if the father is colorblind, he only has a recessive X to pass on to his daughters who are XX. So that's why, uh, I, that's how I knew from this information, the father is colorblind, that she would have to have, at least she would have to have one copy of the recessive allele. 
Gender is determined by sex chromosomes. You should have learned that through this question here. Sex linkage is the type of question we just did. It's when a trait is controlled by a gene found on the sex chromosomes. And for most of the questions you'll do, it's only on the X chromosome. If, it's, if we're talking about something that's on the Y chromosome, it's really boring to solve because it's obviously going to only affect the boys because it's only on the Y chromosome. So it's interesting when we're talking about sex linkage on an X chromosome. Some genes are only found on the X chromosome and are actually absent on the shorter Y chromosome. You can see that in this image here. Okay, I think I went through that pretty quickly or I was rushing towards the end, but go please watch this through again. Always start by setting it up like this. Start with identifying the alleles and then work hard to figure out the phenotypes and the genotypes from the question. This same question could be asked numerous different ways. Once you clearly identify the genotypes, the rest is just cake, as long as you make sure you don't make a mistake when you write down um, your letters. So neat handwriting is a bonus here. These questions always take more time to solve, especially if it's in the form of a multiple choice question. It will take you more time to solve, but it was always worth spending that extra time because these questions are logical, and you can always end up at the correct answer if you approach it carefully. All right, good luck with everything. Have a nice, beautiful day.